Common English Bible as the believer's blessings. Bless the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing that comes from heaven. God chose us in Christ to be holy and blameless in God's presence before the creation of the world. God destined us to be his adopted children through Jesus Christ because of his love. This was according to his good will and plan and to honor his glorious grace that he has given us freely through the son whom he loves. We have been ransomed through his son's blood and we have forgiveness for our failures based on his overflowing grace, which he poured over us with wisdom and understanding. God revealed his hidden design to us, which is according to his good will and the plan that he intended to accomplish through his son. This is what God planned for the climax of all times to bring all things together in Christ, the things in heaven along with the things on earth. We have also received an inheritance in Christ. We were destined by the plan of God who accomplishes everything according to his design. We are called to be an honor to God's glory because we were the first to hope in Christ. You too heard the word of truth in Christ, which is the good news for your salvation. You were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit because you believed in Christ. The Holy Spirit is the down payment on our inheritance, which is applied toward our redemption as God's own people, resulting in the honor of God's glory. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with me, please. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you. I pray that it is your words that are heard, your words that are delivered, your words that are received and preceded. In Christ's holy name, amen. amen. Now, sometimes when we look at Scripture, we'll kind of unpack it. You know, we'll uh, uh, go line by line and see what it says, and then maybe try to make a connection between what was going on at the time in the Bible and what was happening to God's people then, and look at what's happening to us, God's people, now. The approach this Sunday is a little different. We're going to look at the Scripture kind of as a whole. We're going to step back and say, where does that apply to us in the season of our church? And as you can tell by the name, it's going to have to do with mission. So Ephesians tells the story of how a sin was overcome by Christ's death on the cross in six very robust and packed full of information and metaphors, six robust chapters. The author of Ephesians, Paul, reflects on the magnificent and lavishness of God's redemptive work through Jesus Christ and that, that how that is continued by the Holy Spirit. Paul explores the vision of the kingdom of the church of his time and the church of the future and tells of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and salvation. His message was very much needed by the people in his time, the believers then, for Ephesus was in thick spiritual battle. Not too different from what Devin spoke of in his message today. And the people were eager to hear God's word. They wanted to hear what God's plan for redemption was. They wanted to hear Paul validate that they were on the right path. They had, they had the right vision. And they had a right mission to answer God's call. Much like we find ourselves today. If we were to reduce the whole book of Ephesians to just one sentence, it might be that through Christ, God has redeemed humanity from sin and has created a people empowered by the Holy Spirit. So if we look at the city of Ephesus, it has a little similarity than when we looked at Corinth. It's a seaport. 
It's located in the modern day country of Turkey. The city of Ephesus was located near the historical city called Siluk. It's about 422 miles from Istanbul, which is a well-known place in Turkey. It's situated right on the Aegean Sea and was a travel center and commerce center of its time. Now, Ephesus was also the center of the mother goddess worship of Western Asia. There was a big temple there. It was considered a large city of its time with some 300,000 in population. Not quite as big as Atlanta, which is about 430,000. Now, the people of that time, the people that Paul are writing to, are the believers in Ephesus as well as Christians throughout Asia Minor. Paul had used Ephesus as a base of operation while preaching the good news in Western Asia Minor. Unlike some of his other letters where he opens and will address some specific names of who he's speaking to, in Ephesians, he doesn't do that. He's writing to the believers who will hear his word through his letter about God's eternal purpose and the goals that God has for the church or their mission. The book of Ephesians opens with a set of statements about God's blessings for God's people and paid attention, who paid attention to God's wisdom. And he also addresses the purpose for God's church. Paul emphasizes that we have been saved not only for our own benefit, but also to bring praise and glory to God. The climax of God's purpose being to bring all things together under Christ. Paul goes on to explain the steps necessary as you read through the book of Ephesians. Mm -hmm. Throughout Ephesians, Paul explains that the daily life of believers, that's you and I, our daily life matters as we continue to work out the purpose of God's plan or mission. Paul addresses the idea that we are not only affecting our earthly existence, but our faith and actions address the heavenly realm as well. We receive meaning and significance from heaven where Christ is exalted at the right hand of God. Now specifically in the text, it says a few things. That Jesus has blessed us, that he chose us and predestined us for greatness. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure. See how those kind of tie into a forward-looking thought of who we are called to be and who we might be in mission. That we might exist for praise and glory and that he has guaranteed us an inheritance. It is in this context that lead us, leads us to our emphasis for today, the mission of Hapeville First United Methodist Church. Let's start by considering the mission of all United Methodists and then ponder if we might add something to make it unique to our context. Now, as listed in the Book of Discipline, page 120, paragraph 120, it says, the mission of the church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world and that local churches and extension ministries of the church provide the most significant arenas through which disciple making can occur. So that's you and I, that's us. This church, the local church, is carrying out the mission of the greater church by making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. To help us explore what we might add to this, if we do, let's consider a few missions, starting with one of my favorites.
Thankfully, our mission is not impossible. For we have a God that is great, encouraging, directing, and calling us to mission. But how many people remember the first Mission Impossible on television? Absolutely. With Peter Graves? And then this came out in 1996 as a reboot, and there's been several movies. There's even one coming out on the 27th, so if y'all want to get together and go, I'll go with you. <laughs> Had anyone thought of this when we were talking about mission? No. Okay, good, good. Glad I got, got you uh, off track. <laughs> Let's take a, few, a look at a few different mission statements and purposes of organizations. So, for example, if you look at... Whoop, there it goes. <laughs> if we look at uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, the purpose and mission of AA members are to stay sober and help others achieve sobriety. Or how about Rotary International, a service club? The mission of Rotary International is to provide service to others, to promote integrity, and advance the world understanding goodwill and peace through its fellowship of business, professional, and community leaders. This uh, next one's a very unique corporate one. Chick-fil-A. To glorify God. Wow, that's unique in our corporate environment, isn't it? Only two that I know that are this fourth right with their Christianity is uh, Interstate Batteries and Chick-fil-A. They, they put it right out there. But to glorify God by being a faithful steward of all that is entrusted to us. To have a positive influence on all who come in contact with Chick-fil-A. So there's some key things that they're talking about in their mission that they're trying to carry out. Walt Disney, to be one of the world's leading producers and providers of entertainment and information used in its portfolio of brands to differentiate its content, services, and consumer products. Now, bringing it a little closer to home, let's look at the Hapeville Police Department. As a member of the Hapeville Police Department, we will strive to be the best. We will solve problems by creating partnerships, I like that, within the community, and then conduct ourselves in a matter, manner, I like that too, that brings respect to the department, to each other, and to the people we serve. Now, I mention these not to hold those companies, organizations up, but to look at some of the words that they choose, to be in partnership with, to conduct ourselves in a manner. Wow, what would our manner be like? Uh, you know, just, just kind of brainstorm and thinking, what might our mission be like if we were to add something to the United Methodist overall mission, which is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world? So what is our mission here? We've talked about vision. We talked about outreach. Remember, plant, grow, water. We talked about eat, outreach. Uh, boy, the last time we worshiped with the Baptists, I preached on how uh, Peter approached the eunuch and how he reached out to him. And then we talked about outreach last week in regards to meeting our neighbors and inviting them. But what is our mission, and is it any different than the United Methodist Church? Now, in a minute, you're going to receive a blank card. Do you mind passing those out? Now, what I'd like you to do is write down what you think our mission might entail. If you think it's the same as United Methodist Church and it doesn't need to be added to, that's good enough for us, that's fine. Just write same on the card and, and turn it in. But if you can think of other words or phrases, you don't have to be perfect. It could be an a greater emphasis on community or something that you heard in one of the examples. Write that down on the card. Just add a few words. And when you're done, pass the cards in to one of the ushers and we'll collect the cards, pray over them, and consolidate them with the church council into a church mission statement. I'm going to go ahead and ask our jazz trio to come on up. I'm sorry, Joe. Can you repeat the mission statement? I would be glad to. So this is our overall mission, which we're under as an umbrella, to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. To make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world.
Think about the things that maybe even related from our vision exercise. Outreach to the community, arts within our church and supporting the local arts. A few people saying taking care of our seniors and our traditional values and customs, traditions. Reaching new people. So besides just this time that we're taking now, if you have ideas about what our mission would be, I would ask that you reach out to one of our council members or myself. You can call, text us, send smoke signals, carrier pigeons. Maybe we ought to get together for a cup of coffee and discuss what is our mission and where we're leading into this as all this puts, comes together is writing this up in the next few months as we get around to planning our new year and our new budget and what is God calling us to do with our church as we outgrow this part of our worship space what, what might we do with our sanctuary and the rest of our physical space going forward do you mind going around and picking up the cards so as we close our lesson out today, I ask you to reflect on the words of Paul this week and on the mission of the church and our church to pray, prayerfully consider what are we becoming? Who are we reaching? Who am I in this church and how am I living out God's call to our church? I'm praying for our church and our mission and invite you to do the same. Amen. Amen.